I was about 40 miles out flying from Alabama to Daytona Beach International Airport. Airport identifier KDAB. It was October 3rd, 2017. A thunderstorm had just passed, which left the skies with shades of beautiful grays and gold as the sun was setting west behind me. The view from the flight deck of my mighty BE-36 Beechcraft Bonanza aircraft was all too familiar to me, as I had spent a great deal of my flight training earning my wings in this airspace. When I contacted Tower, my heart started to race with excitement. Adrenaline kicked in. Was this finally happening? Was I getting closer to this chapter of my life? A chapter that made me grow into the woman and pilot that I am today? Becoming the eighth woman ever and the youngest woman to fly solo around the world in a single engine aircraft? It truly was an adventure of a lifetime. But as you can imagine, it wasn't all blue skies and tailwinds. It was a 90 day journey that was extended to 145 days due to mechanical issues and three major weather systems. Beyond the time frame, there were enough moments and memories that some people experience in a lifetime. Moments where I had an itch to scratch. Now I'm not talking about some bright idea, no. My head was literally itching, it was on fire. I had head lice. I discovered it after I landed in Darwin, Australia, and of course, I couldn't find treatment there because of its remote location. I had to hang in tight until I flew nine hours to Carnes, Australia, and the treatment that I found there was an all-natural one with herbs and natural ingredients that just didn't work. I needed chemicals, something strong to wipe the head lice off all at once. I finally found prescription grade head lice medication in Hawaii. Yes, that exists. And it was just in time for the longest leg of the entire trip, the Pacific Ocean, which was a 14 and a half hour flight. Again, this was one moment along the global flight that just really tested me. It was hard. It sucked. This, this journey, this was all finally coming to an end. Before I knew it, my wheels touched down on runway seven left. As I taxied in, I could see the dream team waiting there with signs to welcome me home. I positioned the aircraft for parking and shut down the engine. Simultaneously, as the engine shut down, tears of joy and relief streamed down my face. I made it. I was home. I was finally done. After I completed my checklist, I jumped out of the aircraft, greeted the team, and kissed the ground beneath me. So many emotions were running through my mind that day. And then there it was. The question everyone eagerly asked me, what is next? This question haunted me. People saw me as this brave woman who conquered the world in a single engine airplane, bringing aviation and STEM to children along the way. This was true and the question was valid. So why did I feel so undone? Mentally, I felt overwhelmed, drained, and exhausted. I so badly wanted to respond that I needed time. Time to celebrate and process this big achievement. And most importantly, I needed to heal from some of the experiences that I had encountered that usually come from a trip of this caliber. 